Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. If you're having a huge problem with envy or jealousy, you can't just fight it on your own. Get up with Jesus and let him love on you and fellowship with him and look at him and look in the word and he'll give you the grace and the strength and the power to do the thing that you ought to do. We should be much more concerned with our inner life than we are with our outer life. Don't be overly impressed by outward things. And don't judge people by their appearance either, good or bad. Boy, the Bible warns us against that. 1 Samuel 16, 6 and 7. When God had instructed for a new king to be anointed, it says, when they had, when they had come, he looked on Eliab, so all the sons of Jesse were brought in for a new king to be anointed. And, they, they all, and there were some good-looking guys there. You know? And they didn't even bother to ask David to come in. So I don't know what it was they thought of him, but it wasn't too highly. And, uh, but God knew him. So, so I guess the question is, is, do you want a bunch of people to know you and admire you, or do you want God to know you and admire you? Which is the most important? And so it says, when they had come in, he looked on Eliab, the eldest son, and said, well, surely this is the Lord's anointed. Wonder what made him think that. He must have looked good. Maybe, he'd been, maybe he was tall. Maybe he was tan from working out in the sun. Surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his appearance, nor at the height of his stature, for the Lord sees not as man sees, Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. That's why God will use some people, and you just cannot figure out why in the world God would use them. Or especially like when somebody tells you their little dream and vision they've got from God, and you're like, yeah, well, you got a vivid imagination, but that ain't gonna happen. I'll never forget the group of my so-called friends when God first called me, and I was so excited. You know, when God speaks to somebody, it make, it, it, what makes sense to them doesn't make sense to you. Because when God speaks to you, he gives you a gift of faith to believe something, but the people that you want to encourage you, they don't get it because they don't have that same faith that God gave you. So when you feel like God wants to use you to do something, don't expect everybody around you to encourage you because they don't get it. And they're going to see you the way you've always been, not the way you can be. Yeah. Amen? And I'll never forget when a girl told me, she said, well, you know, we heard that you said <laughs> that you think you're going to have this huge worldwide ministry. And I said, yeah, I really believe that God told me that. She said, well, we were talking last night. Well, that's trouble right there. We were talking last night, and to be honest, we don't, we don't think you've got the right personality. Well, the thing was is they were right. Didn't have, maybe still don't, I don't know. But the point is, is when God anoints you, I mean, he used a donkey to speak to a prophet. Amen? Amen? John 7, 24. Be honest in your judgment and do not decide at a glance. <laughs> wow. We're looking at people and deciding at a glance and we don't know anything at all about them at all. You know, Jesus is a king, and a king should get to rule over his kingdom. And you know, even his own disciples were always saying, well, when are you going to establish your kingdom? Is it going to be in Jerusalem? Is it going to be here? Is it going to be there? And we're not going to take the time to turn there, but in Luke chapter 17, 
that were asking that question, he said, the kingdom of God is within you. <laughs> it's in you. It's in us, in the church, but it's in us individually. We are here tonight in the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of God is in you. Just give yourself a little pat. <laughs> See, the kingdom is in you. It's in your heart. That's where he lives. He lives in you. You're the home of God. Your heart is his home by faith. To me, that's an awe-inspiring statement. But what a great responsibility that is to have King Jesus living in us. But we need to be much more concerned about our reputation with God and, and, and our reputation in heaven. We have to come to the point where we would much rather have a good reputation in heaven than to have a good reputation here. I don't know about you, but I think we worry way too much about reputation and what people think. And some people can get so caught up in it, it totally steals their walk with God. And even the Apostle Paul said, and it's recorded in Galatians 1.10, if I were trying to be popular with people, I would not right now be an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder how many people trade their God-given destiny for popularity with people. But the Bible says that Jesus made himself of no earthly reputation. I like that. He just followed the Holy Spirit and did some stuff that people thought were just loony tunes. They didn't understand him at all. His own family didn't understand him. He was judged and criticized, but he had a good reputation in heaven. <laughs> Amen? And he was able to help a lot of people. Our outer life is our reputation with people, but our inner life is our reputation with God. So, What's going on inside you? Well, the inner dimension is a very busy place. <laughs> My gosh. You know, I really wouldn't even want everybody's thoughts right now to be turned inside out so I would be able to see what you think of me. <laughs> wouldn't that be scary if every time you're with a crowd of people, their thoughts were turned inside out and you could see what they really think? See, I'm just going to pretend like you all just think only good things. <laughs> the inner dimension is a very busy place, and it's like the Holy Spirit lives in there, and he's the traffic light saying, stop, go, wait, not yet, no, not now, proceed with caution. <laughs> There's imaginations in there, opinions, decisions, discernment, attitudes, motives, purposes. And boy, motives, motives, motives. We could stop right now and just do another whole hour just on motives. I mean, I, I read something last week, and, and I teach on motives quite a bit. And boy, if you want to hear a room full of people, get quiet. Because, see, we're just so busy doing, 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 and half the time we don't even know why we're doing what we're doing. Why are we doing it? To impress somebody because somebody else thinks we should because we don't want to be left out of the group? I don't know how many things that I did in my life way back. Thankfully, I don't do it now, but way back in my life, I did it just because I was nosy and didn't want to be left out of stuff. <laughs> what kind of a ridiculous motivation is that? And, you know, the Bible teaches us that we have a foundation of Jesus Christ in our life, and we can build on that foundation with gold or wood or hay or stubble or straw, and it's how we build that's important. We build. And the scripture goes on to say, this is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, that if uh, anything that we've built, any work of ours, if it's going to survive the judgment of God, must be a pure work because if our motives were impure, then even though we're saved, all the reward of that work gets burned up in the fire. 
So in other words, it's totally useless to spin our wheels and put out our efforts and energy doing things with wrong motives because when it comes to the end of our life, which comes a lot sooner than we think, amen? amen. When it comes to that, what if it's all burned up? I'm just going to tell you, if you want to have any outer power, you've got to have inner purity. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I don't necessarily think that means see him with their natural eyes, although it may mean when you see him face to face. But I think that it also means that the pure in heart will easily hear from God. You can easily be led by the Holy Spirit if you're pure in heart. Inner turmoil, wow. <laughs> Worry, anxiety, fear. What do people think of me? How do I look? Well, the Bible says in Psalm 37, one, fret not yourself because of the evildoers. For in the, in the, they will soon be cut down like the grass. You know, one of the big questions that everybody asks today is, well, what do you think is going to happen in the world? I don't know. And I know there's people that have, you know, a bent toward prophecy and people that are gifted in that area, but I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. But I'm okay with it because I'm not worried about it because I already know where I'm going to go, whatever happens. <laughs> Amen? And I would like to encourage you not to worry about it excessively. Be prepared, be wise, but... Don't be worrying about it all the time. Fret not yourself because of the evildoer. For in the end, they shall soon be cut down like the grass, but the meek in the end will inherit the earth. What does it say? Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Okay, you know what happens to people? And, I, and I, this part of this message is something that I really want you to get here. Some people at the end of every day are just absolutely exhausted. And some of them may be laying on the couch all day. It's not necessarily physical labor that wears us out. It's how we go about that physical labor. Let's just say that you go to your job and you're worried all day about what people think of you. Are in addition to being concerned about what they think of you, you're also jealous of the people who have, well, I don't know, maybe their desk is by a window. And yours isn't. And, I mean, it, you, you just have to manage a few hundred people to understand the stuff that people can get bothered about. But here's what happens. If, if, if we don't calm down inside, <laughs> Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and let me give you rest. I will ease, relieve, and refresh your souls. Let's have some peace in the house. How many of you say, have ever said to one of your kids, can't we have any peace in here? <laughs> well, Jesus lives in you, and he's saying that tonight. Can I have a little peace in here? <laughs> is anybody understanding how important this is? I may not know what you're thinking, but God knows what you're thinking. <laughs> My goodness, I remember, and you've heard me tell this, but I learned so much from this. I remember when Dave and I used to fight all the way to church. <laughs> I mean, if the devil can start a fight, honey, it's going to be when you're on the way to church. <laughs> Amen? And we would argue and fight, and Dave would be swatting at the kids in the back seat. You know? <laughs> But the first, you know, we were in one of those churches that was growing like crazy, so you had to have people out in the parking lot directing traffic and, you know, all this stuff. And the first church person we saw, <laughs> praise the Lord, <laughs> glory to God, we're so, oh yes, this is a great day in the Lord, amen, hallelujah. And I can remember being so mad at Dave standing there mouthing the words on the overhead and thinking. 
Come on, do you know you can sing a worship song and not think about it? <laughs> Did you know that? I surrender all. And I'm thinking, if he thinks I'm cooking him anything to eat today, he's got another thing coming because I am not speaking to him the rest of the day. I mean, it's going to be war when we get home. I surrender all. Come on, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I mean, I thought that was on fire, Pentecostal, charismatic religion. You can set your cute little behind in a pew till it's flat. <laughs> and that doesn't tell anybody that you're spiritual. <laughs> what shows that we're spiritual is when we're put to the test. Because you, you, know, you know when you find out what fruit is like when you squeeze it. If you ever, I, one time I bought this orange, oh, it was, and I paid a dollar for that thing, and, and it was back when a dollar for an orange was pretty outrageous, especially my dollar, because I didn't have that many of them. <laughs> and I was so hungry, and I took that thing out to the car and broke it open, and it was dry and tasteless, and you know what? We got to make sure that's not the way we are. Yeah. And it all starts with having the right thing going on in the inner life. So the Bible is a combination of, you know, first you know who you are in Christ. And let me tell you something, if you're having a huge problem with envy or jealousy, you can't just fight it on your own. Get up with Jesus and let him love on you and fellowship with him and look at him and look in the word and he'll give you the grace and the strength and the power to do the thing that you ought to do. But we're foolish if we think that we can just go act any way we please and it doesn't matter because it does matter. It hurts us. When I worry all day, it hurts me. If I'm full of jealousy, it hurts me. It ends up making me sick. It makes me tired. I'm hard to get along with. It makes me age faster. The best anti-aging advice in the world is quit worrying. Amen. Boy, Philippians 4, 8 says, think on these things. Whatever is true and worthy and good and of a good report. And I love the scriptures that tell us that we should go about our business making melody in our heart unto the Lord. Now, I'm not much of a singer, but I can hum. Keep yourself full of that. Even a good Holy Ghost hum will keep you from having too much junky stuff in your thoughts. I know a girl that I thought of this afternoon, and, and uh, she just had it rough, man. I mean, she came here from another country. Her husband drinks all the time. He won't work. She's trying to run a business, support her family and her kids, and she has to send money home to take care of her. And she, she, just, she just had a rough life. And I've noticed with her that she's always like humming or making melody in her heart. Now, sometimes she's kind of singing in her original language, and I don't understand what she's saying, but I think sometimes, you know, you got nothing to sing about. But see, we don't have to have a thing to sing about. We've got somebody to sing about. Amen. Amen? And so practice just that keeping a little melody in your heart under the Lord. And it kind of keeps things in there in better condition. Be very wise about what you let go on inside of you. Now, Luke eleven thirty nine. 39. I hope you're ready for this. But the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees, you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside you yourselves are full of greed and robbery and extortion and malice and wickedness. You senseless, foolish, stupid ones acting with reflection or intelligence, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? 
And here it comes. But dedicate your inner self and give as donations to the poor of those things which are within of inward righteousness. And behold, everything will be purified and clean for you. But I really want to go after that. But dedicate your inner self. So I just want to challenge people tonight and say, would you be ready to do that tonight? Would, would you be ready to say, okay, Jesus, I heard you tonight. I, yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I think, I think this is a good kind of a wake up. How many of you were just kind of, your eyes were opened a little bit tonight to realize how important the things are that go on. And you know, even if you know it, I know it, but I'm enjoying preaching it. I mean, I always tell people, if you don't like my message, I'll preach to myself because I like it. <laughs> so, so let's just do this. I'm going to pray a prayer, and if you're ready, I want you to pray it with me. I'll do it slow so you can confess after me. But I do want you to keep in mind, you probably don't want to say it loosely because I really believe when you give God permission to get into an area of your life, you can't take it back. <laughs> So, let, let's just pray this short prayer together. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for showing me the importance of my inner life. You said I should dedicate my inner life to you. And I choose to do that tonight. I invite you to convict me, to help me see when things are not right inside, and to give me the grace to always follow you. The first thing I ask for is truth and awareness. I dedicate my inner self to you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Can you give God a big praise tonight? You know, I think we might say that we have two lives, our inner life and our outer life, the things that go on in us and the things that go on around us. Well, think about this. Our inner life is our reputation with God. Sometimes He's the only one besides us that knows what's going on in there. And our outer life is our reputation with people. Which one are you focused on? If you want to enjoy your life, your inner thoughts and attitudes need to be dedicated to God. As soon as a very young girl reaches puberty and she's of childbearing years, you'll see these flags above their houses representing the fact that a young girl is available to a man, essentially on the market, up for sale. And at that point, her life changes dramatically. So what they do is they take him out of school, teaching them how to cook, how to be a, a wife in the, in the home. But part of it is also how to please a man. And that's through, you know, normal things in the house, but also sexually. So we are doing anything that we can to help people understand the value of girls. And helping these girls by taking them into a program called Imagine Hope. If they would live with us for six months and we would have devotions, lead them to the Lord, really mentor them in how to be a godly woman, and then at the same time teach them how to do some skills, basic things like jewelry making or whatever it is that they can have some kind of an income that they can bring to their families, we should give. 
and we should give to those that we don't benefit us. And I think that's what Hand of Hope does and, and we're grateful for that. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash shop. Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse verfrissing? Frisse impulsen levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan. 